Good morning, everybody. Um, it's just great to be out here this morning, uh, just enjoying the weather and uh, being able to worship together. So thank you so much, worship team, for leading us. Um, and then as we continue in worship, um, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to, uh, to James chapter. One, uh, I was praying about uh, what we sh what I should share this morning and follow up to our, our discipleship um, series that we've been going through about our journey and just thinking through what it means to be uh, a disciple of Jesus Christ and just praying about how could I encourage us as a, as a church and um, you know what 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 do you do in terms of living that out practically day to day and uh, so I ended up uh, just just spending some time in James and, and realizing that it's just such a great and practical book um, for us as believers that instructs us what it means to, to be a follower and to live out what it looks like to, to follow Jesus. And genuinely, uh, I know the heart uh, of me and Pastor Paul as we share God's word, um, our, our heart and what we pray about is we just want God's word to make a, a difference in your life. Say, and we want you to, to live according to what God's word says, not because it's what we're sharing, but it's because it's what God's word says. And so I know we pray about that a lot. We just, I mean, as we study God's word, um, it, it, we just pray that it, it works and the difference in our lives and that that's something that um, is being able to be seen by other people. And then we, we pray the same for you guys, that as, we, that as you spend time um, in God's word and under God's word, that you would grow in your relationship um, with the Lord, that you would come to know him more and uh, that you'd be able to just be a, a faithful follower uh, of Jesus Christ. Because the reality is um, we live and this just with, if we just think about life in general, that life is kind of just riddled with trials and temptations right there's so many difficulties that come into our life there's so much temptation out there and that's just a huge part of just what it means to, to, to live life. And so it's riddled with trials and temptations. And we also know, we just turn on the news for two minutes, it's completely rattled with evil, right? It's just like everywhere you look, it seems like the world is just falling apart more and more all the time. And we know it has always been that way, but it's just a reminder that it's just rattled with evil. And then we also live in a time that's continuing to be radically anti-Jesus in the Bible. And so in the middle of those things and, and trying to be disciples of Jesus Christ, what I want to encourage us with this morning is, is how practically do we do that? How do we live in a world where there's trials and temptations, where evil is abundant and where people are anti what we believe? And I think that the key to that is found in, in James chapter um, 1. And it really is this. If, just if you're to remember um, a couple things here this morning is this. It's that heart reformation equals life transformation. So heart reformation equals life transformation. And, and or another way to think about that is this, and we'll explain this more, is that God's word in should equal godly actions out. So God's word in should equal godly actions out. And so James chapter 1, starting in verse 21, I'm just going to read for you a couple of verses and then we'll pray together. It says this, Therefore, ridding, ridding yourselves of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, so that talks to what we were just saying, humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save your souls, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this time where we um, can get together and enjoy your creation, God, in this beautiful weather outside. God, we thank you for who you are. God, we thank you that you are a God that is worthy of all the praises and so much more that we sung here this morning. And God, as we look into your word and we, and we think about what it means to be followers of Jesus Christ, God, I pray that we would just be encouraged and challenged by what this passage is teaching, God, that what we hear and, uh, and your word, God, that it would penetrate our hearts and then that would transform our actions and so God I pray that you would help us to be people that don't just talk about the Bible but that live the Bible out and so God we just pray that you be with us here this morning in your precious and holy name we pray amen and so one thing I, I absolutely love about James is he's just so practical right so it, right at the beginning of this passage before uh, those verses that I read in verse 19 it says the following it says my dear brothers and sisters understand this everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to anger 
For human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. And so we, we kind of see throughout this, this passage that um, this life transformation, so God's word is going to be entering into our hearts and that's going to transform our actions. And so James gives some practical examples of what that looks like right here. And, and a few ways we can apply this truth is this. So, so think about this, that everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And so one practical application of that it's just in our own relationships with one another. Um, this is like directly, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone. This is a, a struggle that I, that I personally have. But how much better would some of our relationships be with other people if we live that out? If we were quick to listen, slow to speak, and, and slow to anger. If I, anytime I'm like, this is like, I do this on my drive anywhere before any meeting. I constantly tell myself, um, you're going to go meet with this person. Just talk less and listen more, right? You just, just stop, listen to what they have to say, like think about that and then open your mouth. Because my temptation, what I normally do is someone is, I just start talking and then I leave and I'm like, I realized I just met with somebody and they just listened to me talk and I, and I never even spent any time hearing about them. And so this practical application here is this, is that as believers, that's something that you that impact our interactions with one another. So we should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and, and slow to anger. And in the context of this, it also, in, in the bigger context of James, it talks a lot about trials and temptations. And so if you, if you understand that context and you think about what it means to be quick to listen and slow to speak, I know for me, when I'm in the middle of a very difficult time, then the first thing that I do is start jumping to conclusions, right? That I'm going through this trial this temptation in my life because of blank, because of this thing that I did, because of this thing that I thought, because life just isn't fair, whatever that thing is. And, and I'm so busy jumping to conclusions, I don't stop and evaluate the situation and ask, is maybe God working in and through this trial for, for me to learn something? Is there something that I could take away from this that would be an encouragement to my heart and that God could use for his honor and for his glory? And so in, in, the, in the midst of trials and temptations, that's another thing that we can do. We can be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And then also another way that we can apply, apply this uh, in the direct context here, if, if God's word is, is penetrating our hearts and there's this heart reformation taking place that's turning into life transformation, there, there's so many different times when God might be speaking into our, our heart and in our lives and we're just easily swallowed the way, right? We, we're, we're hearing God say, okay, this is what this, you know, we're hearing a message. We're spending time in God's word. That's connecting our hearts. And we're realizing there's something maybe that God's probing for us to, to change an attitude for us to be able to understand who he is in a deeper way, to be more confident than in, in him. And then we just take those things and we kind of swat them away. We're like, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe later. Very slow to, right? Really, really very slow to listen and then quick to jump to conclusions rather than the flip side of that. That's another practical application for this. And then finally here, I, I just love what it explains um, for, for anyone that struggles with anger. For, it says for us to be slow to anger, for human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. And so the reality is for those of us that, that maybe struggle with, you know, situations are happening and we start, our blood pressure starts rising and we start to feel that anger that we just want to kind of lash out at other people, we need to realize. It about actually does nothing, right? It doesn't, it doesn't honor the Lord. It doesn't make the situation better. It, it accomplishes literally nothing. And so that's just an important thing for us to remember as we're going through life that we need to be slow to anger because human anger accomplishes nothing for God's righteousness. And so there's some practical examples that then lead us into what's really the, the crux of the, the message and the, what I want to share this morning and, and really is the heart of the book of James. It says this, um, starting at verse 21, therefore ridding yourselves of all moral filth and evil that, so, that is so prevalent, humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save your souls. And so uh, here it is explaining what, what it looks like to sit under God's word, not only in general, but in the midst of things that are, that are, it says here, that moral filth or evil that is so prevalent. And, and what it's really talking about here is that um, sin just corrupts everything. It's like this contaminating, um, it's this contaminating thing that, that anything it touches, it's like
unsafe to drink. It can ruin a little bit of poison, can ruin a ton of fresh water. And so what it's saying here is, is, is sin. What sin does is it, it contaminates something. It's this, distru- it's this disorder or corruption of the heart that then touches every of life. And so as sin goes and are good. And when sin entered the world, it started to take those things and to distort them and to make them evil. So, so evil or sin penetrates all areas of life. And so in the middle of a sin-cursed world, what does it look like where, 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 where evil is so prevalent? How are we supposed to grow and live in a way that makes a difference in our world? Because genuinely, hopefully everyone that's here this morning, our, our prayer is that we want to make a difference in this world for for Jesus right otherwise you wouldn't you'd probably instead of be sitting here listening to me talk on a Sunday morning you'd be taking this enjoyable weather and you'd be sitting at the beach or, or doing something different but but we probably all have this genuine desire to live in a way where our lives point people back to Jesus Christ and so how do we do that it says here by humbly receiving the implanted word And so what that means is that as we spend time under God's word, listening to God's word, that we take the time to, and this is a very difficult thing for us to do as humans, I know it specifically for myself, we have to humble ourselves and say, okay, this is what God's word is saying, and I need to realize that that might go against or be different than my own actions. I need to live in a way that honors the Lord instead. I, I think that probably the best way to, to understand that is this, is, is to understand our lives in, in the, as kind of like a, a sculpture that God is working at. And the, and the sculpture really is our heart. And around our heart is all these things that that's like sin, right? So it's like, you know, when you, when you think of, I can't do anything. I can't imagine making art out of a rock. But someone takes a chisel and they start chiseling away everything that's not what they want to leave there. And so what God does in our lives is he convicts our hearts and we realize there's things in our life that we need to change. And so God starts chiseling away those things in our lives in order for us to become more like him. It's not what, what sometimes what people can get confused of is, is that what Christians try to do is they try to suppress who they really are. And, and to, to pretend to be something that they're not. And, and that's just simply not true. What, what we do as believers of Jesus Christ is we realize that, that God made us, God designed us to, to be a specific way and to live a specific life. And what we're trying to do is then to, to allow God to change our lives, to, to live the way that he designed it to be. And so he goes along and he starts chiseling away different things in our hearts in order for our hearts to look more like Christ's hearts. And that's a, that's a painful process because we, we have to stop, um, we have to humbly admit, okay, there's that, that means first and foremost that there's obviously things in my life that need to change. And so as hard as it is to believe this, I need to understand I'm not perfect and I'm far from that and God's going to continue to do work it in and through my life. And so I sit under God's word, I hear what God's word has to say, it convicts my heart, and then I have to humbly admit, okay, God, I, I want to make a change. God, take that chisel and conform me more and more to be like your son, Jesus Christ. And so God begins to, to do that work in our life. And so we humbly receive the implanted word, so uh, uh, which is able save our souls. And so the implanted word really just means that it's God's word that as believers starts to become part of who we are. It, it's hearts. And so um, God really is always most concerned about our hearts. So we humbly receive his word and we, this implant in our hearts and we allow God to start to chisel away at our life and to transform us. And so that's, that's what God wants us to do. So in order for us to, to be a light in this world, we need to be willing to allow God to change and transform, to reform our hearts. And so if we're, if we're not willing to do that, if we're not willing for God to, to take a hold of our lives and to change us into who he wants us to be, then we're going to have a very difficult time being who he wants us to be. That's a, a very logical conclusion, but we can get so, so twisted. 
sometimes and to just want to do things our way. And we, the reality is this pride can just allow us to, to not be who God wants us to be. And so my prayer is that as you hear this, you realize there's probably different things in your life that God wants to, to chisel away for his honor and for his glory. And so it goes on and says this in verse 22. It says, so we're supposed to hear God's word. We're supposed to humbly receive it. And then it says, but to be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. And so J James makes it very clear. There's only two options here. When God's word starts to penetrate your heart, when you realize that God's wanting to change something in your life, there's always two options. Either you will let God do that and you become a doer of the words, or you're a hearer only, deceiving yourselves. And so either that reformed heart transforms your life, or either there's God's word comes in and godly actions go out, or God's word goes in one ear and out the other. And those are the only two options that James leaves, leaves here. And so we need to come to grips with every time we're, we're listening to God's word, we're saying, okay, God, we're, we're looking at it and we're saying, God, I want you to do a work in my life. And we have to decide when he starts to do that, do we just become hearers that just enjoy sitting around listening to God's word? Or do we become doers of God's word that are faithfully following him? And so that's what it's talking about here in verse 22. And it also says, I think this is interesting, that when we're hearers only, who does it say that we're deceiving? If you have your Bible, so you can see it says that you're deceiving yourselves. And so we need to realize that as we claim to be followers of Jesus Christ and we say we want to, to live according to God's word and then all we do is listen to it and do nothing about it, sees our lives and realizes those two things don't line up. Right? They, they say, I, I, this person keeps saying that they love God and love his word, but I don't see any of that in their life at all. So you're, you're not tricking anybody else. But what does happen is we can deceive ourselves into thinking we're, we're living for God. We're on fire for God. We, we just want to serve God with all of our hearts because we listen to what the Bible says. And what it's saying here is you just, that's not enough. You, you have to not just listen to God's word. You have to allow it to transform your hearts. And that's going to look like a different life in our actions. And so what James is going to do, he's going to give a very clear picture of what it looks like if we're only here. So it says in verse 23, because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like someone, he is like someone looking at his own face in the mirror, for he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of person he was. And this is just such a, for me personally, as I read through this this, this week, what a convicting verse. I mean, how many times in my life have I listened to a, a great message or spent time in God's word and I'm like, wow, like, I don't know why I'm so anxious this week because I just read about how great God is and I've just been worrying all week long and it's like making myself like physically sick and I'm stressed out of my mind and I, I don't even know what to do next because I'm just so full of anxiety and here I am listening to how God's completely in control. Why don't I just trust him? And then I'm like, that's great. I need to remember that. And then two seconds later, I get in the car and I'm freaking out about next week, right? I'm like, oh my gosh, there's this huge and what am I going to do? And I don't know how I'm going to get everything done. And, and right back into that anxious mindset. And what, what's happened is, is I've, I've realized that God's trying to help me understand that he's a God that's trustworthy. I've looked in the mirror and I've realized, okay, when, when I look at my own heart, I, I realize that I'm struggling with this situation. And, and here's the answer. So it's like, it's as ridiculous as, I don't do this a lot, but once a day, maybe I look in the mirror and if I had ketchup all over my face, chances are I wouldn't just hop in the car and come to work. That would be like ridiculous. I would say, okay, that's a mess. I don't know how that got there. Maybe it was probably one of my kids because I don't know how ketchup ends up like everywhere, but it does when you have kids, okay? And so I would clean myself up and I realized that I, I, I need to make a change, right? This is insane. I'm not going to go out and say I care about looking if I can't wipe ketchup off my face. And yet I can sit under God's word, realize there's something I need to understand, like trusting in him. I need, and, and then just like immediately forget that two seconds later. 
And, and that's, what, that's what James is saying here. That, that's what happens when we're hearers only. When we're just content with sitting under God's word, listening to it, which is not a, a bad thing, but just not allowing it to reform our hearts that then transforms our lives. And so the call that James is making here is for us to humbly admit that we need to allow God to chisel away things in our lives and then actually do something about it. To, to, to live in a way that's different in result of what God's doing inside of our hearts. And one commentator said this, and I was really convicted about this. It said, so few profit in the school of God because hardly one in a hundred renounces the stubbornness of his own spirit and gently submits to God. But almost all are, a con are conceited and refractory. But if we desire to be living plantations of God, we must subdue our proud hearts and be humble and labor to become like lambs so as to suffer ourselves to be ruled and guided by our shepherd. Right? right. The reason that I don't look more like Jesus is because I'm proud. And I just want to do things my way. And I'm content with feeling good about listening to God's word and checking off a box that I, I, I read the Bible for two seconds and then doing literally nothing about it. If we feel good, I, yeah, I, I love the Lord and, and nothing in my life changes. And, and that's just me being proud, thinking like, wow, look how great I am. Other than saying, God, I, I desperately need you, God so far from who you want me to be. Help me to, to become more and more like your son, Jesus Christ. And so obviously, we don't want to be these forgetful hearers that look in the mirror and realize there's something we need to change and then do nothing about it. Instead, what we want to be is what James says next here is, is doers of the word. And so verse 25 says this, but the, but the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it and is not a forgetful here, but a doer who works, this person will be blessed in what he does. This is who we want to be followers of Jesus Christ. If, if we want to make a difference and be a light in the world that we live in, we need to look intently into God's word and allow that to transform our hearts. And so what that means is our heart attitude as we sit under God's word is this, is God, I know there are things in my life that, that need to change. I, I know that I'm not exactly who you want me to be. God, I know I'm never going to be perfect, but as I spend time in your word right now, God, would you just do a work in my heart? Would you just reform my heart to be more like your son, Jesus Christ? And, and as you do that, God, as I spend time in your word and you, and you convict my heart and the Holy Spirit's doing a work, God, I pray that I would be so much more than the average hypocrite who hears that I need to do something but doesn't do it about it. God, would you allow that reformation that you're doing in my life to transform my life in a way that people can see the difference that you are making in my life each and every day. That's what we need to do when we come to God's word. That's the heart attitude we ought to have. But so many times when I come to God's word, I just want to read it for two seconds, check off my box and then move on. And what it's calling here for and what James is saying is that we need to stoop down to, to look intently at the perfect law of freedom and to persevere. And I love it says that the, the perfect law of freedom, because sometimes when we think about the Bible, we can say, OK, so what Pastor Mike is saying is there's a bunch of more things I need to do in order to like be this this good soldier of Jesus Christ. And it looks like it's going to be like this this thing that's going to my life and debilitate the things that I want to do. And, and James says it's this, this law of freedom because it frees us to be who God created us to be. You, you understand that the, the reason that, that we want to encourage each other to, to live God's way is because that's how God created us to live. It's not, it's not, it's against our sinful nature, but it's in line with how God created us to be. And so as we do that, we understand that, wow, living for God is so much more freeing than living for myself. And so that's what, that's what James is trying to encourage you, that we need to look intently into this law of freedom and then to persevere in it. 
And, and that's such a difficult thing to do when trials and temptations come into our life. But for those of us that are, that are, that are trying and striving to do this, as we stay rooted in God and His Word, that when those trials and temptations come, it allows us to be anchored to God and to not be shaken in those storms. And so that's what my, the prayer of my heart is, is that as we allow God to transform our hearts, to transform our lives, that that allows us to be deeply rooted in His Word and who He is, and that that gives us strength and fuel in those times of trials and temptation. And so God just allows us to be these, uh, to, to be continuing to, to, to transform our hearts. And I just love um, when I stop and I remember that, that God's still working on, on me. It, it, there's just so many times where I'm just like, I just want to be like this, this perfect thing that God looks like. I was like, wow, there's like another Jesus. And I realized that that's never going to happen, right? But I, I just love the fact that God's not done with me yet. You know, it's like, it's like sometimes I'm just like, it can sound like when someone's sharing a message like this, I'm saying like, just, just be better. Just, you know, and what I'm saying is like, no, just, just allow Jesus to transform your life and, and remind yourself that he, he loves you enough. He's not done with you yet. You know, he, he wants to continue to shape and, and to mold your life because he cares about you and because he wants, to be, he wants you to be a testimony and a light in this world. And then finally, in verse 26 and 27, he goes on to say this, If anyone thinks he is religious without controlling his tongue, his religion is useless, and here it is again, and he deceives himself. Pure and undefiled religion before God the Father is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained from the world. And what it's really getting at here is that God is always interested in followers of Jesus Christ whose hearts are transformed in a way that it's demonstrated in their lives. That, that God's not interested in us just doing religious things day in and day out. It says, it says undefiled religion. So religion that's just focused on ceremonial things rather than heart transformation or heart reformation that leads to life transformation. And so what God's always after is our hearts. And as he changes our hearts, that's going to impact our hands. And so that's what God's after in this life. If we want to live in a way where we're a light in this world or unstained from this world, our lives need to be rooted not in our own pride and sin, but in God's word and in his ways. And so um, that's what this verse is talking about. Examples of some ways that's going to look like. It's going to mean that we control the things that have come out of our mouth. It means that we're going to care for other people and not just ourselves. And so God's interested in tangible changes in our lives as a result of the transformation or reformation that he's made in our life. And so heart reformation as God molds our hearts equals life transformation. And as, God word, as God's word goes into our minds and into our hearts, that's going to lead to godly actions coming out of our hands that people can see. And so what I want to leave you with and challenge you with this evening, or sorry, this morning is this. It's, and this is like, this was a really major, um, I just was so convicted about this, this this week. I was thinking about how much time I've spent in God's word and how many sermons I've listened to in the last year. And so here's the, 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 the what I want to use to, to challenge your hearts to see how much God's chiseled away at your heart in the last year it is how different are you today than when you sat at your first outdoor service last year? Right? How much, how many things, how many times have you allowed God to take that chisel and to, to chisel away more of you so that you would become more like Jesus and your heart would be changed and you'd be different in such a way that you can look at your life and you can say, there are attitudes that I have, there are things that I do differently now than the last time I sat in a lawn chair outside because of the work that God is doing in my heart as I sit under his word in such a way that other people can notice it. Not just something I think where I'm thinking I'm doing great because I'm sitting here still. No, like really, honestly, what is different about my life now than my life one year ago? And, and when I thought about that, I was like, not, not as much as there should be. 
Not, not for the amount of time I spent in God's Word. And what does that mean? That I've been a hearer only so frequently in the last year of my life. I've allowed God's Word to go in one ear and out the other. It hasn't impacted my heart. And if it hasn't impacted my heart, it's never going to actions. And so for me this year, this week, I just spent a lot of time saying like, God, the next time I'm in your word, I, I want to look at it in such a way where I say, God, God, what are you trying to teach me that's going to change who I am for your honor and for your glory? So that's my challenge for you here this morning. May, may, may this year be a year where you're constantly allowing God to chisel away different things in your heart so that your heart m- looks much more like your Savior's heart when you're sitting here again next year. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this time where we can get together. And God, I just thank you that you're so patient and you're so kind and you're so merciful and you're so gracious, God, because, um, Lord, we're a work in progress. There, there's so many things that we know in our hearts and our lives that can change. And God, I thank you that you don't give up on us. That you're continuing to, to convict our hearts through your word and through the Holy Spirit. And God, I pray for this church that when people look at us, they wouldn't just see people who are, are singing your praises and just see people that are reading your word, but that they would see people that are living that out in a way that they can just just notice in the way that we live our lives. And so, God, I pray that we'd be different people uh, a year from now than we are now. God, that we'd be different people a month from now than we are now. Not so that we can be proud, God, but instead that we can point people back to you. We thank you for who you are. God, we thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen.